To start my titration, I have to weigh out about 0.2 grams of sodium peroxoborate into a dry conical flask. The weight needs to be determined on an analytical balance, which shows weight into milligram range. So the balance is encased and I need to open the door, put my flask in and close the door again. Any slight air movement will affect the mass shown. I add peroxoborate into the flask. While it says approximately 0.2 grams, it doesn't really matter what it is exactly as long as I write down the mass of peroxoborate that is in my flask. In this case, I'm a little bit above the desired range, but as I said, it doesn't really matter. I have 0 0.220 grams in my flask. As this titration needs to be done in duplicate, I prepare the second flask at the same time. The flasks are now labeled with A and B so I can tell them apart during the titration. The weight in the second flask is 0.2024. The next step is to add potassium iodide to each of the flasks containing the peroxoborate. I need to add about 0.7 grams of potassium iodide into the flask. This doesn't need to be done on an analytical balance as I add in the potassium iodide in excess anyway. So approximate masses are fine for this reagent. Once I have added potassium iodide to both flasks, I prepare the acidic solution. I add 30 milliliters of distilled water into a graduated cylinder. And I add 10 milliliters of two molar hydrochloric acid to the water into the cylinder so that I have 40 milliliters of somewhat diluted hydrochloric acid. And add this to the first flask and repeat the same for the second flask. Initially the solution turns yellow, but then darkens to orange or brown if it doesn't go dark, I've made a mistake adding my reagents and have to start over to make sure all the potassium iodide reacts with the peroxoborate. I need to let this sit for about two minutes before starting my titration. So in the meantime, I can fill my burette with thiosulfate solution. I put a waste beaker underneath, filter on top and make note of the concentration of the thiosulfate solution, which is 0 0.1036 mole per liter. As the burette is clean, I don't need to rinse it and just can fill it up straight away. Once I've filled it, 
fairly high. I take out the funnel from the top. I drain some of the solution into the waste beaker to remove any bubbles from the bottom of the burette. Now I'm ready to start, so I take the initial reading of the volume. I have now started my titration, so I have removed the waste beaker from underneath the burette and are holding my flask that contains my peroxoborate and potassium iodide in the hydrochloric acid solution. I slowly add the thiosulfate solution while constantly swirling my flask to ensure that I have a good mixture at all times. The color will go from brown to orange to yellow and when it turns about yellow I add my indicator. So I add about one milliliter of starch solution which turns the mixture kind of quite dark and as I'm nearing the end point I add the thiosulfate solution very slowly at this point ideally drop by drop while still constantly swirling My endpoint will be reached when the solution turns colorless for the first time. So this is the endpoint. If I let this sit, it will turn dark again after a while. But the endpoint is the first time it turns colorless. So for the calculations, I've written down the volumes of the titration together with the weights of the samples. So for sample A, my starting volume was 0 0.37 milliliters. My end point was 24.41 milliliter. So I added 24.04 milliliters of thiosulfate. And these are the values for sample B, where I added 24.87 milliliters of thiosulfate 